and clay no problem i mean good heavens all sorts of changes including you a new role maybe you could give us a sense of what the new team looks like over there sure dave thank you thanks for you know agreeing to allow us to speak to your viewers these days your readers um well you know just like you and a lot of other people i love to call talbot county my home um, we have a wonderful community here um, that we all enjoy and together over the last year, we have worked hard as a community to come together through a very difficult time. And although we are facing terrible challenges that are affecting real people's lives, there are, are great stories of, of wonderful things that this community has and continues to do. Interestingly enough, right now we find ourselves in a period of I'll call retooling. We have some senior level um, positions where people have reached retirement age and they've moved on, like Andy Hollis. We have, uh, we're going to be soon having an opening for a finance director. We just had, we just took on a new planning uh, official. I'll have to refill the emergency director position. So there are some senior level positions, which are an opportunity to retool and to, uh, and to make sure that we push forward with, uh, with a new team of people to address challenges. Um, first and foremost, you know, public safety core services are important and the voters spoke at the last election that they wanna see expanded EMS coverage in the north end of the county so that we can continue to maintain that immediate response to the most critical patients. So we'll be pushing forward on that, I'm sure with the council. Um, recruitment and retention is a big issue for us, not only with county positions or public safety positions, such as our, um, our sheriff's deputies, um, our correctional uh, staff, our paramedics, EMTs, uh, our county positions, but also to support our volunteer fire service for, for, with recruitment retention, are very, uh, very is a very big issue. Um, we need to build a new sheriff's department. We need to extend sewer into um, the Bay Hundred area. And you, the council president mentioned the importance of that from an environmental environmental mitigation perspective. This is about taking septic systems off the grid and putting them on a sewer system. In essence removing toxins that are released through the bay. So it is about clean water. It's about cleaning up the Chesapeake Bay, which is a good thing. Have there been ways in which we've been able to take advantage of COVID and either in terms of moving quicker on infrastructure projects or things of that nature? Yeah, I think, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, in every, so being a long serving emergency manager, it's, you know, I, I deal with disaster situations and you're always looking for silver linings. So, you know, we talk about preparing for disaster, then we respond, and then when we recover. But then when we recover, we look at how to mitigate the future. And there's a silver lining issue. So absolutely. I mean, look how efficient we're becoming at, at, uh, at, at using technology with Zoom and WebEx and Google you know, Hangouts and these other things. You know, that builds efficiency and process. Um, we have seen all kinds of incredible things from our community, everything from People getting together to sew masks early on so that our public safety responders would have masks when we couldn't find them, you know, to, to building efficiency, supporting our pantries uh, around the county to be able to build them up, not to take over the responsibility, but so that they can better serve the community in the future. Um, so we're finding ways that we can help them uh, be better in the future. And, uh, and there'll be a, a number of issues that we find that um, are silver lining issues. So. Um, we have to focus on that. And you know, um, you know what I will say with COVID is um, there are emergency operations. And I talked a little bit about the fact that we, we view um, pandemic, pandemics as one of many crises that could occur. And when we look at a community like Talbot County, we look at five basic pillars that support our county. They're public safety and health, they're the environment, there's economic stability, and there's education. Those are four, I'm sorry. You can clip this out. Um, but the bottom line here is, is that um, we, we have coordinated in the emergency operations of the community response. We have about 50, 50 some or 50 plus organizations and agencies that participate weekly in an operations call. We, we identify issues that need to be worked through and come up with solutions. These are, these are organizations like the health department, of course, in the lead for this pandemic, the, the business community that we talk to every other week, the hospital, you know, all these community organizations. You know, I, I assume that this this vaccination process was uh, discussed quite a bit uh, in terms of how the county would deliver on this. 
when you look at this without pointing fingers, what what do you think has happened uh, with the way in which uh, the county has planned this? Why, for example, some people say, well, there are four different places that I can sign up. Why can't I sign up with one or, you know, and, and you know, it, it would be interesting uh, as you've seen the this from the get go, what your thoughts have been. So we're just about 30 days shy of a year since that time when we, the council got together and, and uh, we began attacking this thing called the COVID pandemic. So it's been, it's been quite a year for everybody. And uh, what, I, what I will say with regard to the vaccination opportunity, number one, it's unprecedented that in less than a year, we actually have several vaccines. Um, you know, we have to remember the fact that, uh, um, you know, that, that, that is uh, unprecedented um, to be able to get the vaccine, vaccines up and running in such, such a quick order. The second thing is, you know, we, we only control so much of this operation with regard to vaccination. I mean, the good news, if you talk about silver linings, the good news is we were really concerned that a large number of people would not want to get vaccinated. And it has been just the opposite. So now our demand far exceeds our supply. And so that's good news because to your point earlier, you need to get a certain percentage of the population vaccinated for, for, the, the, for it to be effective. Um, people have to be patient. Uh, we don't control what we receive. Uh, we are working uh, to support the health department who is in the lead with regard to this. Um, they, the governor's office is trying to implement a multi-pronged approach to vaccinate as many people as possible. Um, and that multi-prong is the health departments that achieve the prioritization that has been talked about. Um, and the second prong is with our healthcare uh, providers. And the third is to play to our strong suit, if you will, we know pharmacies are vaccinators. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to get vaccine into the hands of those pharmacies who do that, vac vaccinate folks. And so they're setting up that infrastructure now. So it's painful right now because people want it right now. But what you're gonna see is you're gonna see over the next number of weeks and months, a, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a comprehensive increase in the amount of vaccine that becomes available. Mm. Um, so it's gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna increase fairly quickly over the next 30 to 60 days. And we're gonna have an infrastructure to be able to push that forward. So we just have to plead for patience patience in people. Um, again, the good news is people want it. Um, we're going to try to work out the bugs in the system the best we can. Um, we are trying to support uh, Maria McGuire, our new health officer, to make sure she's successful. But I will say that as I sit here with you today, Talbot County is one of the highest per, you know, uh, the, the percentage of people populated in our county. So we've been pushing with what we have the best we can. And the message I want to send to the public is, they should know that the county council is pulling out all star stops in trying to fight for the, the, the doses for our people in Talbot County. Mm -hmm. We were at the seat at the table every week speaking to the governor and senior staff to make sure that we try to get our share to our people in this county. And that will continue. Uh, but at the same time, we have to be good partners and understand that, you know, we have other counties in the state. And we have to float all boats to the surface because in order for this to be effective, the percent of a percentage of population has to be, you know, vaccinated. But the other side of that coin is that uh, at least one or two types of communities have been very skeptical uh, of vaccines in general. And, uh, you know, if we're looking for a 75% success rate with vaccinations to, uh, Try to put an end to this. Um, you know, it's the other the the other uh, part of the equation that I'm uh, a little bit worried about. We have to realize that not everybody has a web page, um, and not everybody is technologically savvy. Um, especially, you know, some of our older folks. I even put myself in that category because I'm getting up there as well. Uh, so, you know, we have to be creative, and so we are. So, a lot of our plans once our dosing. Uh, our, our, our volume of doses come in. We have we have plans to reach out and have regional clinics. The health department will set up regional clinics, more community oriented. Number one, number two, they've worked with the Avalon Foundation, who they're wonderful all the time. Set up a call center so they can call in, try to get answers to difficult questions. 
uh, our health officers put together frequently um, ask questions uh, that they can they can use at the call center for folks. Um, we're trying to be able to push more information out through our network with our town administrators, um, with these coordination calls. So it's kind of like all hands on deck, trying to push the, the information out to the public. So when we talk about our minority community, um, that's important as well. We work with the multicultural center um, to try to uh, work through some of the translation, the necessary translation to get information out. We've worked through in the last year with uh, Matthew over there and Lorelli. Um, on some challenging issues that have surfaced through this process and, and, they're, and they're incredibly helpful. And we'll continue to try to reach out to our minority community to, to make sure that we have full transparency and that they're informed and they can make that decision. I mean, because at the end of the day, it's a very personal decision as to whether you want to take a vac vaccination or not. And again, I would just simply say, early indications are uh, much better than we originally thought. We thought that there would be so many people that wouldn't want the vaccine and it just seemed to be the opposite right now. So I hope that trend continues and that pay, people are patient and that we will continue to push for more dose and dosing. And as we get more, we will expand the capability to push that out. We will constantly look for ways to better communicate with our public and to provide services to help them get to that place to get a vaccination. Hey, Chuck, can I come back to you on a couple of things? You still run a business. Um, and so I would like to get your impressions of what you and your colleagues have been going through. I mean, is there, again, is there a silver lining? We, we hear all the time that, you know, there's no real estate inventory and you know, right. everybody's fleeing the city to, yeah. to come to uh, Talbot County. Do you feel that way? Do you, do you feel like, uh, there is this noticeable tick up um being a business owner going through this um had ha ha had its challenges um i i started noticing first when you know back in you know a year ago um you know when things started going where we had to wear the mask i i felt i felt like i needed i needed i'm doing jobs where i need to go in people's homes okay so a little bit of sort of panic in a sense. I was like, uh oh, I, I, I'm, I guess I'm not going to be able to go in people's homes to get shut down. And, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to lay people off? But to be honest with you, it sort of worked just the opposite of what I was thinking. People were very open for me to mask up, come in, make them feel, um, like their project meant something to them. Um, and, and a lot of people, a lot of people have chose to stay here. A lot of people have second, third homes. So, so people have chose to stay here, do remodeling, build homes. Um, it's, a, it's a noticeable um, event that's happening. Um, you know, the inventory now with all the realtors is, is very low right now. It's very low, but work, I, I was, I was, you know, all the contractors and, you know, we, we, so if, if you only can imagine for, for what, what it takes to, to build a house from, 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 you know, just the initial plans to giving a turnkey to somebody to go into Eastern hardware, getting keys made, mm -hmm. you're talking about literally hundreds of people that would be out of work if a contractor got shut down. So I, I was nervous and all that. And, and it really, we're really blessed that it, it, it really is, it's, it's really busy out there. And people are doing projects because they're sitting home. They've been, you know, best, basically quarantined for a year. So it's kitchens, it's baths, it's, it's, the, whole, it's the whole nine yards. And it's, yeah. it's really been fascinating, um, you know, like, the, you know, there for a while, you know, everybody was really complaining, you know, six months ago because we we had to be quarantined. But, you know, you go over to Lowe's and there was 300 people inside of Lowe's, you know. So, you know, that was a little tricky. You know, we and council heard a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, um, the, the that world, that world is is fast and fury right now. Um, uh, prices have gone way high. You might have heard. 
um, building materials and, and just in general materials itself have, have really skyrocketed on some products. So um, to answer your question, it's, it, it was, it's, it's still scary. It's, it's still scary because anything can happen. Um, like Clay said, I, I, I just find it fascinating that we, we, we really got a vaccine less than a year. So that, that's, that's really a miracle, R really a miracle. And like Clay said, the, the, I think we didn't estimate that we didn't think people would want to shot, but everybody wants to shot now. Um, and, you know, it, it just makes people, it's, it, I think it's going to make people feel a little safer and they can go out and they're, they're really tired now of staying in for the last year and that type of stuff. And they want to venture out and do things. Uh, tick up with real estate and all related uh, mm -hmm. industries. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, hospitality and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, restaurants have taken a hit. And of course, you know, our second or third product here is tourism, if, if I got that statistic right. Um, have, how do we know what the damage is in the aggregate for, the, for developing a budget? So um, you're absolutely right. And so although we are seeing an uptick in some of these areas, we are quite cognizant of the fact that um, a, a dip will follow. Um, there is no way that um, localities are going to get out of this without you know, seeing an impact to local governments, that is. Um, so normally, the way that goes, you usually see a bit of a, a delay, a one to two year delay. You'll see it impact the state government first, and then the, usually a year later, the county government. So we just have to be, um, as we normally are in, in Talbot County government, frugal uh, as we move forward in our budgeting, anticipating that there will be an impact we move forward. Mm. Um, I will say that the county council, um, which they deserve credit for, when we received the CARES funding, they virtually took the entire $3.2 million and pushed that directly into the hospitality sector, the business community mm. that was being most impacted, as well as individuals. Um, and uh, our team, uh, our business community, the Economic Development uh, Commission, um, the Department of Social Services worked uh, feverishly to get that money out to our community. And so it's been a priority and it will continue to be a priority for us to try to work with the, that, that sector of community is being impacted most. But yeah, I, I think that, you know, the uptick is something that we, it's nice to see, but we are, you know, we're watching it cautiously. We will budget frugally and uh, be prepared for it. Um, I appreciate Dave, I appreciate um, talking to you, and I hope to have some of these um, conversations with you off and on this year and keep the community up to date on things with the pandemic, because it's, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be here, you know, pretty much the rest of the year, and we'll be bringing up dates, and we're going to try to be um, transparent on all this. I want to make sure that everybody can reach out to the council, reach out to myself, reach out to Clay. Um, I, I think it's when, when people are a little nervous and they're scared, they need to know they can call us. You know what I mean? And we're here to help them. Um, we're here to provide a safe haven for them. Um, and we've, we, and we're, we, we're, we're going to try to do our best to be communicative with everybody. And I feel like, you know, we're, we're making, we're going to make some headway here in the next couple of years. And, you know, we're going to get through some of these tough su subjects around here. You know, we're going to bring this community together. So everybody be patient. Um, and uh, we're, uh, we've got, we got great things coming.